I'm, I've never f felt like this before. I've prayed and I knew you were the one. There's no proof of that. <laughs> so I, I don't think that um, guys who don't voice it out are not, they're not ready. I mean, marriage is a huge responsibility and it's a bit scary. And guys generally, people will tell you that guys are generally commitment phobes, you know. Ah, so I think I was past the searching stage. I felt like, yes, I'd been praying about it. And then I just got to a point where I was like, actually, I'm happy to be single. Um, you know, I'll think about it. I was 22 at the time. I'll maybe get married around age 29, 30. Let me just enjoy 40. my life. <laughs> When I first started going out, I wasn't necessarily like, this is the guy I'm going to marry. But I think that it's pretty soon, I think, for me. More so for me than mm -hmm. him. Okay. So looking at, like, I don't know if you have anyone around you that's younger that's dating. Do you think that we're doing stuff wrong in some aspects? Not, not, I wouldn't say doing something wrong, but you know, for me, and I think sometimes myself and Kuna, even if we're watching like a movie and everything, and we just look at we've gone through that before, you know. I think younger generation now, there's I, there's that resilience, you know, that um, is that the word now? Yes, that resilience, you know, is not there. I think there is that much of it did this, I cannot take it, I can't deal, and I'm out, you know, like there's some people that you really love that would do some things to you, and you're like it will cut you real real deep and times you know people mess up mm -hmm. they do you know it obviously we all have levels of what we can take i'm not you mm -hmm. know saying um, anything against that but i think it's that resilience nothing even who the people i look up to like you know the obamas and you know all these people that i look up to even my pastor and his wife they didn't get there in one day you know even like my daughter you know sometimes she jokes like oh i want to marry someone like my dad and all that and i'm like huh? you are looking at your dad no. the now you know it's it's your dad through has gone through a bit of you know True. work True. and yeah well <laughs> we look at some people and be like oh i want someone like that that person was not like that from the day one you know so sometimes we, i think they just need a bit more staying the course you yeah. know that sort yeah. of thing and it happens in even career or um, um maybe courses in school there are things that are hard and you go oh that course is too hard maybe i want to change it why do you want to change it nothing is easy you know just stay the course and try your best and you know don't let it break you that kind of thing so maybe that mentality that we both have has really helped in our marriage and maybe yeah. it could help in mm -hmm. other yeah. marriages as well so and for me i had expectations expectations are killers mm -hmm. so he was not meeting those expectations that i had mm. but i knew that it was him mm. having gone out with a few people when i was single i'd say it's not it's in retrospect it's not great because it's it creates certain expectations of you so you at going out with so many people is if it's not working out you're like no this is ending definitely it could be after a year or a few months but with marriage you can't do that but then if you've done it so many times when you were single it becomes a difficult thing when you're married and um, i personally i respect people that have not i've got a friend who's at fol now and the first girlfriend he had was his wife and similar for his wife and that's just a great example to me i feel he didn't take a lot of baggage in terms of expectations or how things could be into his marriage so pretty much he was learning everything firsthand in a marriage and that just makes life much easier than having had all these experiences and then come in and um, almost subconsciously expecting things that are not realistic mm -hmm. as far as I know but there's no hard and fast rules so if you have gone out with a few people God still got great plans for you so don't don't let it bring you down yeah. Um, I'm in the same boat. I went out with a few people, but there's nothing wrong with that. So mm -hmm. we're all different. Some people can't just sit down and not um, have uh, interest, a love interest in their lives. But take wisdom from God, mm -hmm. follow God's word, and seek godly counsel mm -hmm. in the process. Mm -hmm. It pains me because I feel that there's there's always this gap between generations. We're not reaching out. We're not. Um, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think it's not. I mean. It's a generation, you guys know enough, you know so much already, maybe more than what we know. Um, and 
Um, sometimes you feel you, you guys feel oh, we know everything already, but but um, we did that to the generation ab above us also, also. But but wisdom, I mean, yeah. someone said wis there are two ways you get wisdom. There's the world, the wisdom of the world, which is the school of black and blue, yeah. and black and blue means that someone that has been beaten, that has gone through it before, and that comes with age. And the other way is when you pray from above for wisdom. So I think it's quite important that they might not know as much as you know, but they are wiser than you because they've been through so much. Mm -hmm. yeah. Try and be honest about anything and everything. I know it's a very, it's easier said than done. There's some stuff that is difficult to put into words or to explain or to articulate. But I remember we had, we had a bit of a rocky, a rocky bit come 2016 going into 2017 and it really affected 2017 and I remember speaking to one of my friends a close friend of mine and I, he was the only one I was really talking to about this I wasn't talking to my family about this or other people it was just him and I was just like I don't see myself getting married to Ruth at the time I really didn't know I was really confused and he says you should you know probably call it off stop you know leader in our on so to speak so I remember meeting up with Ruth and we kind of decided to part ways yeah. for literally like a month <laughs> and I remember my stepdad talking to me and he was I forget the verse but it was speaking about like just being tossed and turned by like the waves and the wind mm. and the sea and that whole point of like not knowing being very indecisive and I knew before speaking to you again and before like initiating like let's get back together I needed to be sure of mm. I need to be sure in my mind that Ruth is the person I'm going to marry. And I was. I was pretty sure after that, I spoke to your parents. That was a fun conversation. It was actually. It wasn't bad. <laughs> yeah, but honestly, so it's those kind of things that begun to creep up. You yeah. begin to realize that actually you grew up in two different houses. You have two different backgrounds. You're totally even different if you're people. Yes, even if you're both. Ah, even if you, you would live on the same street, <laughs> you are different, different people. So. You begin to discover the differences before you start dating before you, you get together you you probably see more of the similarities between yourselves mm. but as soon as you start she says yes you start dating you get married that when you begin to see the differences and quite quickly it begins to feel like wow our differences are way more than our similarities mm. how come we didn't see this before you know um and then you begin to hopefully make a conscious decision to work on the differences and find a balance somewhere so that both parties are reasonably happy. I want a breakfast in bed every morning for my wife. <laughs> but for five years I've never gotten that. <laughs> so I had to drop that. <laughs> I'm joking, no. At the end of the day you have to realize that you're two individual people and you can't impose your will on anybody else. So you have to reason your way to finding a solution mm. um, and to meeting each other's expectations. If someone's not meeting it, then you do your best to help them as much as you can. But you have to let go of certain expectations. You can't go in with, I think a lot of people are disappointed when they get into marriage because they have so many expectations that are not realities. The truth about marriage is if you're going in with expectations, um, being an example yourself will help those expectations be materialized. So for example, you want someone to use the foot bin, always use the foot bin yourself, always set it up, get things ready. You want the place to be tidy, start, initiate, and then encourage gently. <laughs> <laughs> those are the sort of things, that's what I think anyways. No, no way, that's just excuse because even after you do that and you marry, see once that ring goes on the finger, you start seeing each other differently. I think. You, you want to be with someone and marry someone that you enjoy being around, not that you're just attracted to or gives you butterflies when you, you're around them, but those butterflies will very quickly disappear. But, you know, that friendship is what will sustain you. And We've spent a lot of time without any children for, we've been married for five years plus now, and we've just spent time building our friendship and yeah just getting to know each other more and i think that's important because when your children come it's a different ball game apparently so i've been told so um having that friendship there would sort of stand us in good stead over time so friendship i think is one of the most important things mm -hmm. because then you can be open with each other then you can be able to communicate the things that you don't like and um, friendship spurs communication i think the friendship it's it allows you to have sincere communication
as needed. Mm. It's almost like we've built a house and we're going back to foundation, foundation. to rectify a few things here and there. She came from, this is the UK, that's Nigeria. She moved up to Dubai and I thought, okay, she was going to move to Leeds, but she didn't go to Leeds from Dubai, she was going to Malaysia. No, I was here. You thought I was going to go to Leeds, but I didn't go to Leeds, she I went, went to Dubai. And then you thought I'd come back to Nigeria. Yeah, she went down to, to Malaysia. Malaysia. Like, yeah. But I was never going to, to put what I thought was uh, my own interest ahead of what I felt was her career at the time. Mm -hmm. So if she got a job and the job required her to move to Malaysia, we'll make it work somehow. I was never going to say, oh, don't go to Malaysia so we can be together. No. No, I, distance does mad things to relationships. If I didn't feel like I heard, I would not have stayed. How, how did you deal with that? Oh, I, I, think, I, I think it's safe to say we're still we're, we're still, still dealing, recovering. recovering from that. Mm. And this is what, how many years of marriage? Eight years. Eight years of marriage. So. That's the thing with distance. When you're talking to somebody face to face, you can read those facial expressions. Mm. You can tell when what they are saying is, it means this, this, this. But when you're reading a chat on the phone, you can't really see. So it's very difficult to interpret what the person is actually saying. I couldn't and tell when she was joking. I couldn't tell when she was serious. My goodness, this guy tell. is very serious. You cannot just say, uh -uh, I beg, leave me, Joel, be gay. You know, I come from a family where we are very vocal like that. We just always fight. But fight is not fight. Fight is play. My, you know? my family, His we family don't fight at all. Like, I don't remember. The last time I fought with my sister, if, he, if his sister steps 10. on him, like, wow. I'm Honestly, like, I stepped on you. I'm so sorry. Let me kiss it. Like <laughs> My husband's like, I'm a shift. So if I if I said big head, you'd be like, Why are you calling me that? <laughs> what did I do to deserve such harshness? If that's not true. <laughs> so it's weird. Um, the whole distance thing. What I realized quite quickly is the person I was perceiving. Um, now that we've lived together for seven years, it's definitely not, not that person I thought she was, you know? Yeah. I was dating him and I was not dating him. <laughs> that's pretty, was, that's pretty I, much the definition of a long distance relationship. I was dating him and I was not dating him. I was living my life. Mm. I was doing my thing. But I, I just knew that there was some guy over there who was introduced. Okay, fine, good. But I was doing my thing. As in, Trust God. Trust God has the best in heart for you. That Nothing can separate you from God's love. So if you're looking for someone to spend your life with, then trust that God will bring that person to you. Mm. So I think recently we heard something which was really profound, that as, as a woman, I know the world has changed, but as a woman, you should not be going out there and looking for a guy and searching really, really hard. Mm -hmm. You just prepare yourself as a man as well, get yourself ready, but be attentive, make friends. I'm a strong sort of proponent of there's nothing wrong with going out, asking someone to go out for a coffee or go out, not, not just not necessarily on a date. It could be a date, but a date doesn't mean we're going out. A date means we're going to get to know each other to talk for a bit. But if that's not comfortable for you, then go in a group. I think when we first met, I would intentionally go out to their social nights out at Starbucks just to be there to be able to talk with Mary as well in the group of many, in the sort of in the midst of many people. So feel free, socialize. You can't, you can't meet people when you're locked in your closet. Yeah. Yeah. Learn to cook. <laughs> <laughs> this is for both the guys and the girls. Yeah. Yes. I just think it's a good skill to have. Yeah. In, <laughs> in, the, in the early days, I was teaching Mary how to cook. Really? Because, but she was lie. good. Yes, but then she's become so good. But then it must, if guys are saying, oh, she needs to be able to cook massive, 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 and oh, you yeah, rule out a lot of amazing people just because of something so trivial. Mary is such a great cook now that her skills exceed mine. You understand? She makes so many things. But when we got married, I wasn't, I'm not a fussy eater, but I was teaching her a lot of stuff as well. But she's just become great. Mm -hmm. So it's, you never let something as trivial as that yeah. be yeah. a key determining factor. So mm -hmm. God's brought us together. And the truth about it is whatever relationship you get, even if you get in, if you're with the most perfect person, you'll still find issues. Mm -hmm. So people that get divorces, if you find people that have been divorced, mostly they continue in that sequence they get serious they become serial divorcees so they divorce 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 just because the reason they divorce is because they are not satisfied and the lack of satisfaction is something that um they're not able to work through themselves whatever marriage you're in you'll still find areas where you're not 100 percent happy with 
that's just the truth mm -hmm. but then you learn to live because someone else is living with you where you have your imperfections but then you're expecting somebody else to be perfect it doesn't quite work that way mm -hmm. so um i don't we've i've never had that yes we've had difficult moments but it's just we we continue you can be with you can decide to go with the next person but then it's where does it stop yeah. mm -hmm. where does it stop because yeah Everybody wants to continue going on, yeah. but then where does it stop? You end up with a broken heart and left a lot of broken hearts along the way and regret, as far as I know. Mm -hmm. However, there have been some people that have still gotten married and their second or third marriages have worked well for them, from, as you can see. So there's no hard and fast rule. As long as you do what you're doing in line with God, God doesn't agree with divorce, as far as I know, and as the Bible says. So live with God. But if something has happened and you're, you're, you're a divorcee or a widow or whatever, then let God lead you. Mm -hmm. Nobody goes into a project thinking that it's going to break. Mm -hmm. But do you go in thinking that there's always a way out? Yeah, or a plan B. Or a plan B. Because when we wanted to get married, we said, listen, no this is plan A. There is no plan B. So whether you like it or not, <laughs> we're stuck together for life. So we better make it work. So even, I mean, no perfect marriage anyway. Even the times when we've really been uh, at each other and I'm like, like, oh, this girl, I just, just, uh, she's doing my head in. I know that you better go and sort it out because there's no <laughs> plan B. Going. <laughs> so, so first of all, I think that's the first thing, for basics. Um, because, and it's not the fault of this generation at all. It's just what we've been fed by um, okay. old, older generation, okay. um, media, things we watch. We always think that if it's not working for you, then there's always a plan B. Don't die in it or yeah. something like that. People say a lot of things like that. So it's always, it, those things are some liminal messages that go into the back of your mind. That, well, if it's not working, I'm just going to just leave it and get out. So that's the first thing. So then resilience. So if you if you know that there's no plan B, you automatically your resilience builds, yeah. builds yeah. more. And, and you know, because we kind of made that decision, we're doing this where we've decided, you know, we're engaged, we want to be together for life. Mm. Even when little, you know, things came up that you're mm. kind of like, ah, <laughs> <laughs> I never thought this person could be so annoying. Yeah. You know, you yeah. made the decision. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah. And that never goes away. Yeah, yeah because uh, it yeah. just progressively yeah. more annoying. Yeah. But you learn to adapt yeah. and just to, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's, it's not an option, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, and is that it's a sacrifice. Like, like studying, for example. Mm -hmm. Like, if you want to get good results, you need to sacrifice your time mm -hmm. to study. And, yeah. you know, like, you know, uh, do research or whatever to get to your goal. Does that make sense? Um, so even in marriage, it's a sacrifice. We need to make sure, sometimes, like, <laughs> we get, like, an argument or something, and I'm sure I'm right, and he, you know, we're, we're, <laughs> we're both similar people in that sense. But even, like, sacrificing just to, I think you probably did more than me. <laughs> and, like, <laughs> and, like, saying, like, you know what, it's fine, you're right, or whatever. I hope you might do what I'm saying. He's not a big fan of movies, right? Mm -hmm. And I love movies, you know, sometimes, and I appreciate when he comes and, like, wants to watch a movie with me, because it's not, you know, I know that he doesn't like, like mm -hmm. that, you know? Um, and as a sacrifice, sometimes I try and, you know, try and be interested in things that he likes, because I know, even though I, do not like it at all mm. but like in order for the marriage to um thrive and to you know keep on going yeah, and to grow yeah. um you need to sacrifice things it, it doesn't have to be in the sense that i mentioned it could be in anything mm -hmm. but just kind of realizing that like you will have to yeah. <laughs> sacrifice at some point yeah. um, and kind of understanding that before you get into it because of you you can't benefit if you're not willing to give yeah um, and then we always mention something when we're, when we're dating and that's the teachable spirit someone that has a teachable spirit someone who uh, is willing to listen and willing to learn yeah. and willing to change if i have um someone younger and they are dating i usually will ask them that do you know anybody that that guy or girl listens to that can correct them that is a, that they're accountable to she knows that if I do something crazy, there's one phone number <laughs> that she can call. And that person just needs to say, 
Hello, look only, come and see me. <laughs> <laughs> and my brain resets <laughs> automatically. You know that kind of thing. So there's always we there's always we should always have someone that we're accountable to and that we can listen to. Once you get find especially for men. Yeah. Once because men generally we're proud. And not proud like we're not he's not pompous or anything. Just but we just ego. I don't want anybody to tell me anything. I it's my home. I want to do what I want to do. But we sh we should always have someone that we listen to. Someone that can call us to order. This person that I'm talking about, it's not my father, it's not my mother. If my mother calls me, I'll just bamboozle and just say, no, 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 no. If my father calls me, I'll be like, ah, it's not your business. But that person, I respect them so much. So, so accountable relationships, those, those things are, they're quite key things I, I feel has helped our relationship to this stage. And I think that's one of the things that the younger generation may be. Yeah. No, I, I would agree, just on our own personal experiences, cohabitation would have been a bad idea for us. It would have mm -hmm. really been a bad idea for us. Do you think it's dangerous? Yeah, it is huge. Dangerous. You should not. It's huge. Even dangerous. if you trust yourself and you trust him, mm. I mean, you guys like each other. You are attracted to each other, and there is no amount of spirituality. There is a level of attraction, you know, to each other. Abby, yeah. I would say yeah. so. It is absolutely dangerous. It is dangerous. It is really, really dangerous. Yeah, dangerous. There is a way you can you can yeah. get to know each yeah. other to a certain yeah. level without yeah. Yeah. living together. It's just an excuse, it's anyway. Just an excuse, because if yeah. if if that was if cohabiting makes you know the person fully, then um, why uh, people who are cohabiting don't they still have the high divorce rate? They still have a divorce rate. They still have so issues. They, they divorce rate. So it's not. It's just. It's just an excuse. Yeah. I think it depends on the the couple as well, and it depends mm -hmm. on their beliefs completely. For me personally, I would just I wouldn't advise it just because of as humans we get tempted. You Big know, time, yeah. we and most of the time we will give in to our tempt temptations. Um, personally. And I'm just speaking on me. I know that I am weak. Like I will 100% give it to my, you know. Yeah, um, so I wouldn't advise that, um, especially for me. And like in our situation, mm -hmm. I probably would wouldn't advise that. So just if uh, me and Connor lived together before we got married, mm -hmm. like that's it. Yeah. I'll probably be pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I know the. I mean, current current um, economic climate and other things sometimes makes it more um, more attractive because why pay rent on two places, you know, all those kind of things. But it's really, really dangerous. It's really dangerous. But see, there are still some things I'm still learning about him. There's still some things he's still learning about me because even if we live together, there are some situations we that never happened. We ne Kids never came in. No matter how much we lived with each yeah. other, kids never came in. In-laws never came to stay. Mm. You know, there was no time where maybe um, he has to walk and maybe the car is spoiled. You know, there are some situations that would mm. still never. So mm. there is no let's kukuma. Mm. And I get why people do it. I, I would say mm -hmm. as well. Of course, like uh, yeah, yeah. Only, you know, there's there's a lot of reasons. Especially why in this time we're yeah. living in it right now. Yeah. Um, I couldn't imagine if yeah. we were dating. Like, but if we were dating and then still dating into COVID and we weren't allowed to see, that would be... Yeah. So yeah, I couldn't blame people if they are, especially during this time when you don't want to be alone. I mean, of course, there's, there were times when maybe I went to see her and it was too late and I had to, but, but it was very few and far between, you know, you had to sleep over or something like that. In, but but even at that time, she, you had a roommate, you had a Yeah, I had a flatmate, flat so flat I wasn't mate, staying so. on my own. Yeah, so, but, but those were, I mean, even that, even if it's midnight, you see me, I'll My husband was it. rather I, very spiritual. I'll, okay. He will look for taxi. <laughs> I'll either look for taxi or I'll, I'll walk. The, the, the temptation yeah. is too huge. It's just for your own, to help you one. Then also, I don't know, not all men, but some men, I think it, you, you're showing your value, you know, when you're keeping yourself and just like, no, it makes them, they know that, oh, they're waiting for something. Do you ever feel ready? for marriage or were you just like no 
I don't think you ever feel ready. You yeah. know? Like I feel that even even on the wedding day, I don't think you ever feel ready. What? But the fact that almost everyone, I think, a hundred percent of marriages have Still issues, happens. it means nobody was actually ever ready. There's no manual for marriage. Yeah. So my answer would be, yeah, you can never be ready for yeah, marriage. Okay. You can be grossly underprepared, and that's why mm. teenagers shouldn't get married. Obviously, mm-hmm. I think. You can be grossly underprepared for marriage, but I don't think you can ever be 100% married, um, ready for marriage. I just feel that, like, naturally, naturally, can you ever be ready for the rest of your life, you know? I don't think you can ever really be 100% ready, yeah. if I'm honest. Yeah. So, sometimes I look at my life and I'm like, you're yeah, married, shall <laughs> Even till now. I'm like, you're yeah, somebody's wife. I think that it's almost like, <laughs> what's a leap of faith? <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, you know, um, that you have faith that, you know, like, no matter what happens, you work through it. Um, and that's that. Like, I don't think you can ever 100% say, like, I know I wasn't 100% ready. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the end of the day, that's the decision we've made, you know, um, and you're just going to have to yeah. keep, make sure that you keep going in the yeah. center and then and go for it. <laughs> Couples that are getting married through a church, we have, uh, what's it called, like a marriage counseling thing uh, yeah. beforehand. Um, and even then, like even like that was great. Like we discovered things yeah. about each other. Um, but even then, I just feel like you can never 100 percent because you, you like even to this day, like we're still getting to know each other. You know, um, I'm discovering things that I didn't know about you. I'm sure you're doing the same. It's, it's I one discovered of those... you were doing a master's last year. <laughs> <laughs> I actually when I was halfway through. <laughs> I don't know. My mom was positive the whole way through. But my dad was, he'd seen sort of many experiences from his friends and how things haven't worked out with marrying people that were not sort of culturally aligned with yourself. And, but for me, I sort of made my mind up and just to honor him, I needed to convince him still. (laughs) But my dad loves Mary just now because we prayed about it and spoke to God. And before the marriage, we went to Nigeria, Mary's first time in Nigeria. And she met my dad and my dad just absolutely loved her. So even, I think even at the airports, my dad was saying to me, don't come. <laughs> really, in, in, at the Aberdeen airport, before I went to Nigeria, my dad was saying to me, don't come, because he wasn't happy. Mm-hmm. But then, you know, you trust God that what God wants for you is the best, and yeah. that's what happened, so. Yeah. Like, Ruth's parents, my parents, very supportive of both of us. We've never, they've been yeah. like our cheerleaders. They've always been there at the side. Like, we've got no stories about our parents being like, you're marrying a black woman. No, it's never been like that. Um, <laughs> No, it's never been like that mm-hmm. or the other way around. At the end of the day, if we're being honest here, your parents don't have to live with a person. You have to live with a person. It's not really your parents marrying the people. They may have the best intentions in the world, but um, let's take from God's example. God's given us freedom of choice and he gives us the wisdom and he gives us the leading of the spirit to guide us. Mm-hmm. So if we make a choice to choose somebody, despite what God's saying, it's still our choice, but we have to live with it. So. Our parents don't have to live with the person that they're suggesting for us to get married to. We, I think the primary relationship is between you and God. And if God's in line with it, your parents will fall in line mm-hmm. eventually. Yeah. For me, the spending on the wedding was more for her as opposed to me. As I said to her, and it may have sounded funny, I don't mind having a wedding at a very cheap place, a quick wedding, cheap place, few friends and weddings done. But because the world, the way the world is, the world's women have grown up wanting to have a great wedding day. So um, if you have the finances, then do the best within what you have. I'd never advise borrowing or spending beyond what you've saved for your wedding. So if you've saved £3,000, do a £3,000 wedding. If you save £5,000, do a £5,000 wedding. People get into trouble when they start, they've only saved £5,000, but they want to do a £20,000 wedding. Yeah. After your wedding day, um, to be honest with you, give yourself a few months, you're going to forget the wedding day. Mm. I didn't even watch the videotapes of my wedding. <laughs> I just skimmed through them, really, just because, not because it wasn't a great day, but just because that day is not the marriage. The marriage is what we're doing after, yeah. really. But I would say spend more on your honeymoon and spend as much as you can on your honeymoon because that's the time you really get to be, your honeymoon holiday, that's the time you really get to spend together. Mm. And to me, we should have spent more on our honeymoon than we spent. <laughs>
<laughs> Although we went, <laughs> we, we had a good time as well, but yeah. Yeah, when you ask that question, would you have spent more or less? Definitely less. Like mm. every time you're like, oh, I could have, especially when I see other people's weddings, I'm like, oh, I could have saved money there. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, your nice dress that you bought. I know. I, I wanted to buy a cheaper dress, but, okay. I, but we had That's to satisfy her to buy an expensive dress. <laughs> But the dress has only been worn for that one day. Yeah. Yes, it's a good day. The only other time you use that is when we have drama at church, when, at FOL. <laughs> we use it as a wedding drama thing as well. But it's just, it's gone for one day. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing God's been teaching us that, you know, material things are very fleeting. Mm -hmm. Yes, you want to. The only reason most people have a big wedding is pleasing people, wanting to keep it, keeping up with the Joneses. Oh, she's done a big wedding. I want to do a big wedding. I don't want to, I don't want to be left behind. I don't want to be seen as doing something mediocre. Mm -hmm. It's just expectations. Mm -hmm. And I'm learning, we're learning to not live by people's expectations of us. We do what's within our financial budget, what God's provided for us. If God wants us to have a big wedding, he will provide big for us mm -hmm. for that. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what I think. Totally. Um, it gets progressively better. Um, I think, Mary has gone from, yes, being my wife, but to being my, pretty much my primary friend, really, because I have many friends, but I don't talk to any, any one of them as much as I talk to Mary. There's many things that I talk to Mary about my expectations that I, have, I can't share with people outside because people will laugh at them or people would say different things. So we've grown in our friendship much, much stronger. Um, I mean, Quarantine has been a big example. We spend most of the time just with each other and it's not really been hard. It's not been hard, but there's hardly a bad day. And when she's going out or when I'm going out, we want to be together still. So it's, I think it's, it gets progressively better. Mm -hmm. you, you learn to tolerate the things that you have to, not tolerate, but you learn to accept the things that you can't change even though you still make comments every now and then. <laughs> but then, and then the things that have changed, you look at the positives, which way, way, way outweigh all the things that um, you like change, changes in. Because yeah. we're quite open and transparent about things. Yeah. Like there's been many topics that have came out <laughs> through the year that we've definitely been open and transparent about. There's some things that I'll only ever say to Ruth, I'll never say to anybody else, but I can trust Ruth with that. Yeah. And having that person you can share with, that you can cry with, that you can laugh with is, you know, is that constant that you need and the butterflies will come and go. You know, it's not like your sexual life just goes really dry, mm. but it's just, mm. it's, it, that will be always up and down. Peaks and troughs, yeah. But your friendship, mm. it will be constant, you know. Just, well, if you're willing to put in that work, <laughs> if you're willing yeah. to sacrifice your ego, whatever, put in that work, then it's, it's definitely worth it. Because you're married doesn't mean you don't find other people attractive. It happens. Mm -hmm. And if you're only, you're only led by chemistry, you make wrong decisions. Yeah. That's, that's completely true. But what men refuse to understand is that when a woman comes in into your home, things open up a little bit differently. Two heads are better than one. Um, two incomes are better than one also. 